So today I'm going to be showcasing something pretty cool that I made on my graphing calculator. Um, I actually made a fully functioning Rubik's Cube timer. And in the first half of this video, I'm just going to be displaying it off and showing you what it does. And then in the second half of this video, I actually uh, will look inside of it and see how it works. So let's get started. Uh, so first, uh, I'm going to go into my program button and it's called Cube Time. So uh, let's start it up now. So first it's gonna tell me that it's gonna clear uh, list six, which is basically, if you have a graphing calculator, uh, you can store different lists. Um, this is basically just asking me this because if I actually have information stored in there that is important, I don't wanna get rid of that. Um, but I don't have any important information in there, so I'm gonna hit second to continue. Um, and then it's just gonna let me know that at any time during the program, I can hit Y equals to quit. So here's the actual interface of the program. It's got the title up top, Cube Timer. It tells me my total number of solves were at zero, and then it says press enter to time. So it does not have a scrambler, but I can hand scramble. This isn't supposed to be like uh, S tier Cube Timer right now. This is just, uh, you know, you have a calculator and nothing else. And then when I press enter, uh, the timer is going to start, so I can now solve my cube. Okay, and we're done. We can press any button, and um, the timer stopped. So now you can see that my uh, number of solves has gone up by one. Uh, my time stays in the center, so that's my current time is 19. Uh, my average is 19, because that's my only solve, and then my best time is 19. So uh, you can do this as many times as you want, really. Start it again. Uh, let, the, let the timer run. And whenever I'm done, I can press any button, except I can't press the quit button, because that'll quit the program. And I can't press the on button, because that's actually used to break programs if you get stuck in an infinite loop. So any button, we'll press it, timer stops, and you can see that it actually adjusted my average uh, between my two solves now, and it adjusted my best time. So that's really it. You can do up to 999 solves, and then after that, uh, some formatting issues will occur. But uh, besides formatting and how the program looks, you can actually keep doing solves until you run out of calculator memory. So a pretty useful program we have here. Um, but that's it. Uh, now I'm actually going to break it down and show you how it works. So if you don't want to listen to me talk about programming, um, you can cut out now. So first of all, uh, yes, you can actually program on a graphing calculator. Um, I have the TI-84+, Plus, but really any of the TI-80s like series uh, will work. So. So I'm going to go uh, under my programs, and we're going to go over to edit, and let's take a look at what is in cube time. So this uh, programming language, I'm pretty sure, is just completely unique to the calculators. Um, but if you know the basics of programming, this will be easy to understand. So uh, first I start off by clearing the home screen. Very simple. I just want to blank slate. And then here I have these display functions, which are going to display the text. Um, I have to be careful to do it a little bit at a time because it can only display 16 characters across the uh, top of the screen. So I have to do it in segments. And basically, it's going to ask me if I want to continue. And then it's going to uh, give me my two options. So the second button is going to be yes, and my alpha button is going to be no. And then I'm going to store 0 into x. What this is saying is that it's setting my x variable to zero because um, if I don't do that, whatever my x variable is, uh, it's gonna keep that in the program. So now I'm starting a repeating function. And here we can see it says repeat x equals 21 or x equals 31. So this repeat function is going to keep repeating itself until x either equals 21 or x equals 31. So within, so here's the entire repeat function here is, I'll kind of center it, is repeat and then end. 
end marks the end of the repeating function. And it's going to ask me get key. So each of the uh, keys on here, besides the on button, because that breaks programs, all of them are assigned a number based on the row and column. So this is row one, column one, so it's 11. Row two, column one, 21. Row three, column one, uh, 31. And then enter is 10, five. So that's kind of how the key system works. And basically what it's gonna do is whenever I click a key, it's gonna put that number into the X variable. So until X is set to one of these numbers, the program won't continue. Now, of course, if I say no, it's gonna end the program. If not, it's just gonna stop the repeat loop and will continue on. So I clear the home again. And then I'm gonna clear list six because I don't want it. And um, then it's going to give me my press Y equals to quit. I uh, just so I know that's a thing. Pause, uh, clear the home again. The pause button, what that does is it stops the program and waits for the user to click enter. So if you just want a way to like scroll through different uh, things of text or something without assigning like key values, you can just use the pause button and you press enter to continue. Clear the home again. Now I'm storing zero into S because S is actually my number of solves completed. So of course, if I have a uh, empty list six, I also want uh, S to be equal to zero. So here I have um, my titles and everything. The output function allows me to put out text at a certain position, row and column. So one one's the corner here, two one is right below it, uh, two fourteen is fourteen characters over, and that's my number of solves I've done. Um, press uh, enter to time. Those are at the bottom, and here's where we're going to start a very large repeating function. It's like the overarching repeating function. So until x equals 11, we're gonna keep executing this program because 11 is this button and remember, y equals quits the program. So we have to make sure the whole time we're asking get key because get key only uh, works for like a fraction of a second. And of course you can't find, you really can't press the key in time unless you're constantly asking get key. So we need to have this, this is very important to have in a repeating function uh, if we're doing key values. And then I'm asking if x equals 105, which is the enter key, uh, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, put zero into t. So t is our time, uh, whatever time you got on that solve. And then I put zero into x because um, I want it to be zero because zero isn't actually a key. And now I'm starting a new repeating function where if x is greater than zero, AKA if X is any key, then it's gonna stop my timer. So inside this if statement, we have a repeating statement, which is gonna ask get key again, because if I don't have get key inside this repeating statement, then this get key will be ignored. So I need to have get key a second time. Then here's like my timer function. I clear the home screen, add point one to T and output T. So the timer works because I, uh, found out through using my camera and a timer that if you clear the home and add a value to a variable and keep displaying it, um, it'll actually conveniently fire like 10 you know, units a second. So my timer is accurate down to the 10th of a second. If you're gonna make this program, I recommend finding out how fast your calculator is through the same method, film it, uh, have a timer right next to it and see how fast it can fire this function. Um, I just got lucky enough to have it be 10 per second, but you should find out for your own if you're going to do this. So here's my little like uh, timing timer function. And then this end is ending this repeat loop. And then, of course, our timer ends. And then this I found on the internet right here. This adds T to the end of list six. So pretty useful thing I found online. And then uh, S plus one stores into S. That's adding our total number of solves to go up one. And then we're gonna actually output all of our title screen again, but this time we're gonna add some stuff. So here you can see I'm outputting average and I'm doing the mean of list six, but above it I have fix one and below it I have float. So what these mean is before it displays my uh, average it's actually gonna round every single number to the first decimal place. 
and then right after it's going to continue uh, float just means it's going to not round at all. So the reason I did this is because I wanted my average to be, you know, the same length as my time. And uh, whenever you would do not whenever I didn't do this, there were times where my average would be a repeating number and it would go across the whole screen. It didn't look very good. So uh, we're just doing this to make sure that our average is a nice neat number. And then I'm setting it back to float because float is more convenient to work with uh, in regular calculator use. And if you don't have float turned back on, then your number of solves will be like five point. Uh, it, it's really weird. I don't know why it does that. Anyway, then it's going to display best and display the minimum value of list six right here. Um, and then, you know, say press enter to time and then end. Uh, this is the end of the program. These two end statements are basically ending, um, I think, the if statement and my overarching repeating statement. So that's it. Uh, that's how it works. Uh, it, it was pretty easy to write. It only took me like 20 minutes. Um, if you know how to code on a calculator, you could definitely do this. If you know how to code not on a calculator, you could probably still figure it out. And if you don't know how to code on a calculator, or you don't know how to code at all, I highly recommend you learn, especially for a calculator, because you can write some pretty useful programs that'll make school a lot easier. Like, example, the Heron formula. This is uh, the area of a triangle by its sides. And there's my area. That's incredibly useful in like uh, any sort, any type of geometry. Another example, uh, the distance formula. You know, it's very convenient just to plug in two points and find out your distance. So these are very easy programs to write. The last two I showed you, and um, it really, really helps you out in school. So um, if you don't know how to program on a calculator, I hope uh, this cube timer would inspire you to do so. But um, yeah, so there you have it. That is a fully functioning Rubik's Cube timer uh, on my calculator. Thank you for watching. Um, yeah, that's all I gotta say.